and we're back okay in this one uh, this is uh, not so much a tutorial and more of just a, a little bit of base exploration uh, base base loving if you will we're just going to love someone else's base for a bit and maybe show off some uh, some designs that people have come up with lots of people do really great designs and they just you never really get to see them uh, not everyone puts them up on imager or reddit or you know does a video on them so this was a map that was sent in to me by uh, Cohen Visser. Visser? Okay, I'm going to... Uh, sorry, I'll mangle the names. But uh, I've had this one for a while and I've been meaning to show it off. And since I'm about to actually do a slickster... Or not a slickster farm. Um, I'm about to do a meat farm using shovels. And I'm going to nick some of his ideas because he's got a great one. Now, in this one here, we've got a, a slickster farm set up. Ooh, that's a bit loud. Uh, so we've got a slickster farm set up. And what they've done is... Cohen has arranged it so that all the eggs that drop in here, every single last one of them, gets dumped into these conveyor rails, or the conveyor loaders. So every egg ends up getting, oh, there's one right there, and they split 50-50 between these two drop-offs. Now, I'm not quite sure of the 50-50 thing, but I have my theory, but uh, the main joy of this, ooh, what's that noise? Hmm. Anyway, the main joy of all of this is that the eggs just come in here, they drop down, they land there, and then they sit there. There is an awful, awful, awful amount of eggs right there. An awful lot. So what happens is the eggs sit there and after 20 cycles they hatch and then you have your uh, slicksters in here. Now the fun bit about this is if they ever need a slickster, these slicksters are going to get wrangled once they go above uh, the set limit which is 20 on this. But uh, if any of these hatcheries go below or any of these farms actually go below the, uh, the eight critters that he wants in there, a duplicate will come along, wrangle a critter when these get too many in here and they have a choice. This is the highest priority of where they will be brought. If they need another critter in here, any of these hatched critters will get wrangled and dumped into one of the ranches. However, if, say, both of those are full, what will happen is it will get... The uh, dupes will... Oh, damn it, I'm doing this... I'm doing this a little bit arseways. Uh, if any of these critters basically have nowhere to go in the four ranches, they will get brought up here and dumped off at this critter drop-off, which has a lower priority, meaning they'll get dumped into this area. And this area here is a little chilly. Yep, this is actually part of their icebox uh, power brick. So they're using, uh, well, let's see what's in these pipes here. We've got petroleum. So they're actually freezing their entire power block down to, ooh, that's actually pretty chilly. Okay, they're freezing it down well below what I was doing. And this basically makes it a nice place where the slicksters can get dumped. And slicksters don't really like cold temperatures very much. Uh, let's just say it, 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 it toughens them up. Uh, I'm just going to skip forward a bit here until we get a slickster dumped in here. Okay, we've got a slickster getting dropped off. Now the slickster is living in icy cold land, and if you check the actual comfortable living ranges they've got, livable range, 35 degrees to 160. That dash always confuses me, I keep thinking it's minus, but uh, 35 to 160 degrees Celsius. Now this slickster here is still going to happily chow down on that carbon dioxide, and it gives this nice little layer of oil here, which means, well, they're going to transfer heat quite well. And if we'll check out the properties of this one, you'll notice their temperature is plummeting. So we're just going to skip forward a little bit more to see what happens when the temperature gets a little bit low below the comfort range. Okay, so this critter here is about to hit its uh, its comfort zone, so to speak. Um, yeah, I used to think these were kill rooms, but I've been advised this is actually an evolution room. Yes, this is where the uh, the critters evolve and take on their final form, which is you know meat. Now, body temperature. Wait, still not dead. How is it? I mean, sorry, still not evolved? How is that possible? Hmm. Okay, come on. Five degrees below. Yep, there we go. Okay, so finally the uh, evolution kicked in. And now the meat hops onto these rails. Uh, these rails will go... Oh, sorry for the scroll. These rails will go all the way up here. Past that enormous storage array. Very nice. Uh, it goes up here across this bridge. It won't go in there because that's an output, so it will keep getting forced on across this bridge. And it gets dumped up here at Meat Central. Basically a nice carbon pit for storing the food. Now, just a, a conveyor chute drops it off down here, and you'll notice there is an awful lot of meat there. Um, in fact, this entire base is just stuffed full of meat. How many calories have we got? 851,000 meat calories. Three and a half million barbecue calories. This is a very, very efficient way of farming meat. Insanely efficient. Now, yeah, I just want to go over some of the bonuses and negatives of this. Uh, it's mostly bonuses, to be honest. There's really no negatives here. Uh, one of the bonuses is no need for incubators. 
their eggs hatch, na hatch naturally, so you don't have to incubate any of the eggs. Now, one of the downsides to that, though, is currently, and this is only a temporary downside, currently, um, say we'll grab Beastie here, the ranching skill can only be improved by hugging eggs. Uh, this is a bug. They're supposed to improve, well, theoretically, they should improve by doing grooming or any ranching-related activities. And this bug has been raised with the developers. Uh, the developers, what's to say, um, they're aware of the issue, but it's a, a low priority. Basically, they know it's there, but it's not a big deal for the game just yet. So they will probably they will fix it at some point probably not this week probably not next month but at some point they will so this strategy will only become more powerful and ranching is quite powerful in that uh you'll notice there at the bottom it says plus 70 percent to groomed effect duration uh, if you groom a critter it's groomed for basically one cycle with this it's groomed for 1.7 cycles so if a rancher gets the ranching scale up to 10 which uh, plus four from the actual skills or jobs yeah skills actually it's not jobs anymore plus four from jobs and say plus six from their skill, they will have a, a plus 10 ranching skill, which will give them a 100% bonus to groom duration, which means they'll be able to groom twice as many critters on average. It just means instead of being able to support 12 to 14 critters, they'll be able to support 24 to 28 critters. It's a huge difference. But since that will be patched out in the future, this will just become more powerful. Uh, as well as that, meat is better calorie-wise than the eggs. The eggs, you're, the eggs, you will have to crack them, so these will have to be, you have to pick up the eggs normally, carry them to the cracker, do a cracking animation, then cook them. With this, you will have to wrangle the critter, drop off the critter, and then the rest is all automated except for the cooking itself. So it's about the same amount of labor. The only difference is egg cracking can be done by anyone. Wrangling can only be done by a rancher. So you're going to be putting a little bit more strain on your ranchers. But the calorie gain is amazing. You're, it's definitely worth it for calories. Now, uh, one thing... up. Oh, I'll of course make a few suggestions because I can't help it, can't help myself. I know we're supposed to be just exploring and enjoying bases, but I, I do want to make a, a couple of minor suggestions. By the way, got to admit, little artwork pieces and everything, very nice, very, very, very cute. But um, I would probably still restrict the critter access or critter movement inside the area, and I would stick in one auto sweeper just for efficiency's sake. I would probably make it one auto sweeper about there. I'd have a, a door and a little wall segment on top to stop them moving, and I'd have all the critters corralled in here so one auto sweeper could take care of them. Just makes it simpler also means uh the critters don't have to travel as far when they're getting groomed so it just makes it so your your critter ranchers can do more groom more critters in a shorter period of time uh, as well as that uh, the way these work uh where is this uh, let's try reproduction rates you see it's uh, plus 17 percent per cycle works out at about every six cycles a critter will lay an egg so what i would probably do here is i would just have one of these i'd have one of these dump off in here just one Probably my first ranch would have all its eggs dumped off in here. And that means on average I'd be getting, for one ranch with six critters, only six, uh, I'd probably up it to eight though for these, but for just six you would get one critter on average a cycle being uh, birthing. So that means you could have one critter a cycle to help top up all these uh, ranches to make sure they're all at full amounts. Any excess, of course, you'd have them sent to the evolution chamber. Um, and then I'd have the other three ranches, all their eggs would just, I would have the shipping rail done up and I would dump all the eggs right off in here. Eggs will hatch in inhospitable conditions, as far as I can tell. So you could just dump the eggs in here, they'd hatch, uh, evolve, and then get uh, transported to Meat Central. It would cut down on about three quarters of the labor required in moving it about. Might be an idea to look into. Now, um, ooh, one other really nice thing I liked in this, bearing this giant ice box, I, I really liked it as well, but uh, it was the transport network. This is the transport tube system. So there's a transport tube, ladder, and a uh, fire pole. But if we zoom out, apologies for the zoom out for those people who get a bit nauseous, you'll notice this is a really, 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 really tall transport network. In fact, it goes all the way to space. Uh, you can see here just at the top where it breaks into space, it's been split off left to right. Actually, I'm going to slow this down so I get a smoother pan. So they get... The duplicates can get out either side and then it goes all the way up into space there's some drywall backing in there the whole thing's pressurized all the way up until space uh, i'd probably put in some bunker tiles there the damage can leak through so uh meteor damage can leak through one tile i'd put in some meteor tiles there but uh yeah i really like that idea and this got me thinking about uh the way i put kinks in all my transport networks um i've been asked about that a few times and my my response was always uh, just in case duplicates drop something but this actually goes back much further it goes back to when uh, Digging a carbon pit was the go-to solution to all your carbon dioxide problems early on. 
and this resulted in a minor problem. Most people stored up their carbon dioxide for something, you know, feed to slicks or something like that. Not worth it, in my opinion. You get far more carbon dioxide out of one petroleum plant than you'll ever get from your dupes breathing. But um, the reason you put the kinks in them was uh, you would dig your carbon pit, and then early on before you got exosuits, because exosuits didn't exist back then either, your duplicates would actually try and go down to the bottom of the carbon pit to pick something up, usually some building materials that ended up down there. And then when they were trying to leave the carbon pit with the materials, they'd run out of air. And what they'd do is they go into panic mode, drop everything they're carrying, run to the nearest place with oxygen, say up here, gasp for breath, and then they go, okay, what was I doing once they recovered? Oh yeah, I was getting materials. So they'd run all the way back down the ladder, pick up the materials, try and leave again, run out of breath, drop it, and then go back up to breathe some more and rinse and repeat. They'd keep doing that and they get trapped in an infinite loop. So kinks were introduced in ladder systems so you could avoid that problem from happening. But I've been, I observed this for a whole cycle. Nothing accumulated here. If you're still putting kinks in your ladder system, maybe, yeah, I think that's just a vestigial habit people have, or well, I have anyway, definitely, from back in the day. I don't think you need it anymore. I think it can be left out. Um, I'm definitely going to exclude them from my next base. I don't think they're necessary. Now, where was Meat Central again? Meat Central was over here. Yeah. Now, I want to have a look at their, this one over here. This is a hatchling egg, and all the critter farms are over here. They have, uh, they've gone tall with the ranches. So let's just dump in an egg in here and watch what happens to it. Uh, oh, cute. So egg gets picked up and it gets dumped onto the conveyor system. Now, if you're relatively new to the game, this is about two patches old, uh, what we're gonna see here. This is going to come along over here and get dropped down into this uh, conveyor receptacle. That conveyor receptacle is lower priority, it's priority one, then the storage bin, which is priority two. So this auto super is gonna try and pick it up and dump it into the storage bin. But there's a little bit of sneaky automation here to turn this off regularly. So it tries to pick it up, go on, go for it. Tries to pick it up, tries to put it in the bin, but ah, the power gets cut off or it gets shut down. So this is uh, basically a sneaky way of doing a, an ore dropper before ore droppers were invented. So this is a, an old version. I've never really got into these. I could say I uh, was against the uh, the idea of it, but it was more a case of I just didn't want to figure out the automation and also that beeping would really annoy me very quickly. But um, yeah, just uh, one of those little old things. Now, actually, one thing I forgot. Uh, another thing I really liked here was the power setup. If you'll notice here, the power is actually buried behind tiles. You, uh, let's turn that off for a second. Yeah, so the power grid is actually just on the opposite side of this transport network. Very, very sneaky. So what was happening, I presume, was the, the power spine just basically goes up here right beside the transport grid, but it's hidden behind a wall. No need for statues, nothing like that. You just build it up. It goes all the way up to the top of the map. Though there is a fun little uh, chicane here where it pops around here just to avoid uh, that chlorine vent. Uh, the joys of neutronium. Nothing you can do about it. You just got to go around it. But uh, also, as well as that, it goes right around this uh, oxygen setup. I think I know the, the issue here. They couldn't really bring it back in. Cohen couldn't bring it back in and go straight up here because it would be in the way. You still need access to this area. So instead, just went all the way around it and then straight up continuing all the way to the top of the map. Very nice. Very, very, very nice way of doing things. No need for fine metals, anything like that. Just throw it in behind the wall. Can't be seen. Can't be heard. Who cares? Yeah, it's a very, 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 very cute way of doing things. Anyway, um, thanks again to Cohen for this lovely map. I've actually had this for a couple of weeks. It's just uh, with the playthroughs, I didn't really get a chance to stop and actually go through all of these. But uh, next up, next up we have uh, a lovely base here from Orion Eganess. Now we're on uh, cycle 1500 here, so a little bit later in the game. But uh, they definitely have a, a strong affinity for lots of gas color. There's pink here, orange, more pink, green... Uh, it, it's a very well sorted base in terms of gas pressure. That's that's yes, that's just beautiful. Yeah, but um, the main thing we're going to look at here is these refineries for now. Now Orion was telling me that this was basically uh, his method for dealing with the overheats that could possibly happen with these with the smaller system I had. Now looks very complicated. Took me a while to trace this, but it's not that bad. It's actually pretty straightforward. Uh, the oil goes in here. Just imagine this is the reservoir tank of your. Uh, nice cool oil coming in at 125 or so degrees. The oil goes in here, it gets used, and when it is, it gets spit out the other side. Now, this is going to get a little bit complicated over here looking, but uh, that hops across this bridge here. So in this side, out the other, and goes up here and into this tank. This tank is actually inside the steam room. So the steam room here, it's 124 degrees. 
So this uh, tank is actually, this liquid reservoir is made of steel, just to make sure it won't overheat. In fact, everything in here is pretty much steel. The liquid tanks, the uh, the liquid shutoffs, everything in here, steel, 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 everywhere. Now, so the liquid will hop across here, hop into this tank, and then it gets spit out the bottom, what was it, the bottom of the tank here, goes across and gets fed into these radiant pipes. So basically the hot liquid comes in here, rotates through these pipes, dumping off all its heat. Now it goes in here, down, up, 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 up. now it gets up to here, and this is where things get a little interesting. The, uh, Orion put in a temperature sensor here, 126 degrees. If the temperature is 126 degrees in the pipe, then let it continue on into this tank. You'll notice this nice, uh, this liquid reservoir here is below 126, and that puts you back in the reservoir, ready to go back into the metal refinery. However, if the temperature is not 125 degrees or 226 degrees or lower, what it will do is it will force it to just go around and around and around until it is 126 degrees or lower. So it'll keep going around and around. And because of the way priority flow works, it'll come down here and it'll stop any more liquid from getting in here until it's bled off that heat. This makes sure that you always have a nice big stash of uh, liquid petroleum ready to go. And it also means you generate quite a bit of heat from this. Now, they've put in another system here. Slightly less well understood by me, but I think I, I know what's going on here. It's a bit hard sometimes to figure out. There's always method to everyone's base, but sometimes figuring it out when you're an outside eye is a little bit tricky. But they've got some polluted water over here, and this polluted water is hooked up to a shutoff here. Well, it, was it one here, one here? They're basically dumping extra chill into the system. Uh, the way it works is this temperature sensor down here, when it detects that the temperature is above 126 degrees, it goes, hey, dump in some uh, cold polluted water. And the cold polluted water over here goes, yeah, okay, fine. So it comes along and it hits this here, this liquid shutoff. Wait, no, uh, this, oh my God, sorry. I'm getting all confused and turned around in this one. Uh, so polluted water comes in here, hops across, and then it goes through this liquid filter and rotates through. Then it gets down to this point here. This is where the liquid shutoff goes. Yes, we need it or not. If we do need it, it gets dumped in here and gets dumped out right there. See right here? it gets dumped out this liquid vent and dropped down here. So it basically adds in more polluted water. The pressures in here is 170 kilos. So the polluted water gets dumped down here, adds in an extra chill to stop any overheats that could potentially happen. Doubt they've needed to use it much, but it's there. Now, as well as that, they've got a conveyor loader for soil. Why is that? Well, it's polluted water. So the polluted water, when it boils, will actually leave a little bit of dirt behind. That dirt then gets dumped into the conveyor rails. So there's a little conveyor rail system here scrolls back and forth through this uh, steam turbine area, which is quite chilly. They've put in uh, several huizworts, though I think they've taken out a couple because they didn't need them. So it's minus 40 degrees in here. So after it scrolls through all of those, it gets dumped over here, and then they've got uh, nice soil that's not actually too hot or too cold that they can use for crops if they want to. Very nice little system for taking care of it. A little bit too much steel for an early game build, so it'll definitely be more of a late game one, but that's a nice way of taking care of things. And there's the uh, aqua tuner over there, you'll see. So this aqua tuner is providing cooling for something way, 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 way over here. This, um, one second. Yeah, the game acts, acts a bit funny because uh, I don't have some of the mods installed. So I presume it's uh, all the way over oop, here. You have the oil, you see the big cooling array going through all these power transformers. Very centralized power grid. I like it. Then goes through here and then all the way back. So it's cooling down the power transformers and the actual hydrogen generators. So as you can see there, that's pretty much just constantly rotating, taking heat out of the area. Now, wow, actually I'm going to slow that down to play so I can actually, yeah, now I can move around while things are still happening without it choking all the time. Yeah, my base is struggling with this. Now one thing I really liked that they did was, uh, that Orion did, it's tend to do with the, here's the natural gas, also the natural gas from their oil refineries over here, all that natural gas, well there's even more natural gas coming from the top, it's all dumped in here. In fact, there's even natural gas right here. This seems to be a rather large storage tank for it. So all of this natural gas gets dumped into this uh, natural gas array. And you'll notice there's steam in here too. Basically the extra heat given off by the natural gas generators is just dumped into the steam in this room. That steam is actually able to power these steam turbines to generate uh, electricity. In fact, these are set to, if it's above 170, turn on the steam turbines. That one's set to 140, this one's set to 170 as well. So basically this one is pretty much always on to be open for business if the temperature in here gets above 140. 
the reason you can do this with, with the natural gas generators is their CO2 output comes out in pipes. So that's just dumped off down that way. We'll follow that pipe in a minute. It leads somewhere. But um, yeah, they're basically using the heat generated by the natural gas generators in the running to generate even more energy, which I quite like. Also, smart batteries are in here, also made of steel. So any heat given off by the smart batteries also gets dumped into this room. So it's just a way of recycling all that heat for use. Now, then you've got this co this crude oil over here. This confused the bejesus out of me for a while. I'm like, where did that come from? There's no piping to actually indicate that it's getting dropped off. Uh, you know, nothing. There's a, there's a gas pipe that just terminates there. I presume it's vestigial left over from something. So it took me a while to figure out why this was here and why it was 140 degrees. I was thinking a heat sink, something along those lines. Maybe this gets too hot. No, actually, if you scroll up here, look, mesh tiles, mesh tiles. That's suspicious. More mesh tiles. Keep going. Mesh tiles, mesh tiles, and leaky oil fissure. So what's happening here is this oil, crude oil is coming out at 300, what is it, 326 degrees Celsius. Wow, 327, let's round that sucker up. So once this hits a, a pressure of 500 kilos, it opens this door, and the door drops all that oil straight down here. Now that oil is, well, 300 degrees, so it's going to end up dropping all the way down here. And you have a, a 300 degree pool of oil unless you have a way of nearby of handily deleting all that heat. So there's a little temperature sensor here and it's hooked up to these doors. It's also hooked up to a temperature sensor over here. This is to load balance the temperature. For example, this is saying it's a, if the temperature is above 150 degrees, this will engage. And if this is above 140 degrees, it will engage. So the crude oil ends here has ended up about 141. So basically these, uh, these steel doors will engage and allow all the heat out of here to be dumped in here and basically get eaten by the steam turbines. So that 300 degree oil gets chilled all the way down. Now, what does this door control you might ask? Uh, we've got a automation wire up here, hooked up to a hydro sensor. When that detects there's any pressure in here, it opens this door. So the moment the crude oil eventually hits that point, this door will open and then this uh, crude oil, well, it goes on the march of the penguins. It goes, excuse the scrolling, but it's the only way it's going to go, actually I'll pause the game to make it easier, it goes all the way across here, drops down for a bit. You'll notice all this crude oil in here, there's a, a crude oil well spitting out crude oil that's actually doing the same thing. So that crude oil will combine with the March of the Penguin crude oil and keep going all the way along here. Has a, a quick pass by a neural vacillator. Oh, passes by a couple of kilns. Uh, there's a massive st cold storage rate, we'll get back to that one. And then it comes down here and gets dumped into the uh, crude oil pit. And that crude oil pit, feeds up into the crude oil, oh, goes all the way back up here, feeds right back into the, oh, over here there's some storage and there's the uh, oil refineries. Quite a nice way of getting rid of, I mean, normally I don't even bother with leaky oil fissures, but if you have a heat deletion device nearby, why not? It just worked at, I don't know if this was worked out or planned, but just having this nearby conveniently allows you to delete the, the crude oil. And one thing I really love is it, me, I probably would have put in a little tank for about four or five tiles of this stuff. It's like, no, no, no. Let's put it in an enormous tank. That is just beautiful. Very industrial. I, I like it. Now, um, ooh, yeah, where was it? There is a centralized hub for the actual shipping rails. Uh, let's actually just trace the shipping rail. Ah, here we are. Okay, this, this one took me a while to figure out as well. I, I'm not ashamed to admit it. But this seems to be sort of a centralized drop-off point for several raw materials. There's uh, some a uh, pepper bread bun or something. Uh, there's some sleep wheat grain. Oh, yeah. Sleep wheat grain and something else ends up over here. What is it? Sleep wheat grain and... Oh. Mushrooms. So sleep wheat grain and mushrooms end up over here. And it just so happens this one produces fried mushrooms and... Oh, no sleep wheat grain. This one produces frost buns. So frost buns and mushrooms are produced over here. And this grabber over here can actually reach those. Can't grab that. So any of the sleep wheat grain or anything like that that ends up in here gets dumped in here, dropped over this side, and gets fed into these two. Any meat or peach or pepper nuts goes over this side, and lo and behold, we have omelets, oh, sorry, eggs as well, omelets and barbecue on this side. Very nice little setup. As well as that, right, just follow me along here. A bit confusing, but there's actually a coal bin as well. So coal gets dumped in here, comes down this rail, uh, excess coal goes down here to the oil biome to be stored, the other coal goes across here, goes up, and feeds into medical center. 
So here's a, a coal receptacle we're waiting right here, so it can actually top up those uh, apothecaries when the time comes so that they can make tablets. Hmm. Now, where was the last one? I think I hadn't finished tracing the last one yet, but there's uh, one here that actually handles metals as well. So this one is barbecue. Yeah, this one is... Where is it? Nope, 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 nope. That's also edible cooking ingredients. No, it's, it's this one. No, oh. Down here, I think this is coal. That's consumable ore. Actually, no, this is lime and eggshells. Come on, don't prove me wrong. Yeah, eggshells. So lime and eggshells goes in here. That comes down here. Oh, wait. No, this goes down here. Goes all the way down here. Very centralized. Uh, yeah, it's going to show up on the rail as our genetic ooze. But it goes all the way across here. Down here. Oh, wait. No. Cross here and gets dropped off in this where it actually feeds into the rock granulators. One of whom is set up to do fossils to lime, and one of whom is do, to uh, organize to do eggshells to lime. There is an awful lot of automation going on here to just make sure things get where they're supposed to go. And it all sort of stems from that little centralized hub. Very nice. Very, very nice indeed. There is a lot of effort gone into this base. I mean, okay, let's just zoom out a bit here. Look, drywall backing in your living areas, massive tank of Paku. Uh, there's a second. There's a storage array over there. This is actually the icy storage array. If we check the temperature overlay, so there's an icy storage array here, just for storing ice, snow, uh, polluted ice, all that sort of stuff. So there you go. All stored in hydrogen, of course. I, I have no idea where they've gotten this much hydrogen from. It's kind of, it's kind of insane the amount of hydrogen floating around this map. Actually, let's zoom out here. So yeah, there's a gold volcano surrounded by a whole bunch of transformers. Actually, let's show on the power grid so we can have a look at that. Hey, here's the power overlay. <laughs> that is so, so ridiculously neat. Wow, I feel embarrassed about my power array just looking at that. Actually, let's grab a, a wire here. What's the wire looking like? Oh, dear Lord. That's a pretty high power draw. Consistently high power draw. I don't think they get overloads, but damn. That is just... Okay, that's beautiful. Okay, I gotta turn that off. That's actually that overlay is actually killing the frame rate. Uh, let's zoom out a bit more. Oh, actually over here, yeah, we got uh, your emergency hamster wheels, whole bunch of showers, several toilet arrays. But I think the the fun one is this one in the middle. It's got four sinks on one side, four sinks on the other, and four toilets in the middle. Now, fun note: you only need the one sink in the toilets to make them an actual washroom. But basically what they've done here is they've crammed in the four toilets into one room and then they've left the additional sinks on either side. So just, it doesn't matter which direction the dupes leave in. N nice way to handle things. Uh, down here you have a great hall. Look at the size of that great hall. That is actually the definition of great right there. Also, double layered it. Very, 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 very nice looking base. Now, let's zoom out again. Yeah, so as you can see, that's the sort of core base area. Massive storage arrays over there. There's your uh, centralized redistribution for food, lime, food, lime, and coal. Uh, there's your icy storage units over there. There's your industrial brick here with your uh, oil. Gold volcano in the middle of a giant power. I don't know. All the power radiates out from this area. And then uh, down here, you've got your oil biome. And there's your oil well one, oil well two, oil well three. Oh, triple oil well. Very nice. Oh, but sort of... Uh, these flows to just dump all the oil off into the one spot. Now, you've also got kilns down here. Not, not quite sure why the kilns are down here, uh, but yeah, I presume that's because their coal is nearby and they've probably got more automation rails. Let's check. Do they have more automation rails that are going to drop off anything but coal? Uh, I would not be surprised if clay ends up down here as well, so it's some sort of automation rails. So yeah, and then we've got uh, your obligatory slickster farms over here. Ooh, there's some fossil down there. There's some fossil left behind. That fossil needs to go. That, that would make very tasty steel out of that. And uh, over here, you've got your sour gas containers just to dispose of that sour gas that accumulated. Yep, instead of uh, tidying it up into a nice neat area instead of leaving it accumulate somewhere. Ooh, also oxygen pressure. Quite nice looking base. I'm not actually going over specific builds here. I just sort of want to oogle the base out. It, it is quite a beautiful looking base in many ways. Okay, look at that. Uh, I'm still a little confused as to what this is. Let me have a quick look at this for a second. Okay, I, I think I got it. Maybe. Um, yeah, there's a... Uh, oop. Yeah, the game is uh, jerk, jerking around a bit because uh, I don't have some of the mods installed. There's a, a few mods that are running just uh, visual aid ones. 
Now, uh, yeah, their electrolyzer setup is up here, and I think they were dumping the hydrogen from it in here until it literally got out of control. Was I right, Orion? Is that is that a good guess? But uh, yeah, I think the the hydrogen was getting dumped in here until it got out of control, and then they ran a uh, they disconnected it there, and they're now running it down to the hydrogen generator so being burned off. They're literally swimming in hydrogen. It's why it's happening. Um, yeah, I think they they upgraded their oxygen setup up here. Their old one is down here. I think it's still being used. Yeah, these ones over here. These are the old, uh, quite sexy versions of them that were. No, actually, these are probably still quite used quite heavily. But yeah, you basically stick in three wheeze warts, cools down the whole thing, and you have uh, your basically your oxygen setup and your cooling all in one little box. Very nicely done. So I think the new oxygen setup sort of replaced that or supplanted it or supplemented it one way or the other. You can see they're dropping off oxygen. It's still functional and drop, dropping oxygen off about the base. So I think this is the main base one and the new one up top is just... Uh, actually, let's have a quick look at all that gas overlay. God, that is so ridiculously neat. I've been accused a few times of being OCD, but uh, you got me beat. You got me beat, Orion. This is... Damn. Oh, and down here you can see all the CO2 outputs. This one, I think, is from the um, oh, this is from the natural gas generators. These ones up here are from the petroleum generators. So if we trace those back along, apologies for the scrolling again, but uh, yeah, we can trace these all the way back. It goes back to here where we have the petroleum generators going off. Now, where is it? Yeah, you can see the cooling loop coming through from here. So there's actually a, a cooling loop going around there with polluted water. Still, it's a, it's a slightly warmer setup than I'm used to, but yeah, it's working quite well. Very, very nice. Now, yeah, where was I? Oh, yes, uh, back up here. Now, yeah. so there's the new auction setup. Nice cooling loop setup as well to go beside it. A few wheeze warts to add in the additional cooling. Yeah, that one anti entropy nullifier would struggle a bit with one of those. And then uh, oh, another gold volcano tapped off over here. Just uh, tapped into steam turbine and a couple of wheeze warts that are... What's the temperature in there? Oh, yeah, the temperature's gone. Why are those... Ah, the doors are opened automatically once the temperature gets too cool. And then up here, we've got yourself a, a rather enormous battery box. Dear Lord, that's a huge battery box. And just some extra power runoff, just because, why not? Also hooked into a steam turbine heat deletion device right here, which is going up and feeding. And actually, I just pause that. And feeding, yep, all the mining drills up there to keep the, the top of the base cool, or to keep the mining drills up top cool. Um, yes, I, I may have encouraged you to build this by accident because I Turns out this might not be necessary. I haven't actually tested it yet, but I have been advised that you don't need these now. Uh, but I'm going to test it before I can confirm that, so maybe don't rip it out just yet. And there we can see your uh, one of your rockets set up there. Where's the other one? There was another one around here somewhere. Oh, wait, no, maybe thinking of a separate map. But yeah, that is a beautiful, glorious-looking base. Let's uh, zoom all the way out and just do one last look. I want to do looking at the overlays. Where is it? Uh, oxygen overlay. Okay, there's the big hydrogen cloud in the middle and all the oxygen around the living areas. Everything else is all exosuited. Uh, power overlay. Dear lord. I don't know if that can show up very well. If you're looking at this on a mobile, may, may not quite do it justice. But that is so... All the straight lines, parallel lines everywhere. Very nicely done. Uh, temperature overlay. Actually looks pretty cool as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll cut it out here, but uh, yeah. Very nice base, especially like the this I, I think it's a little bit too you couldn't do this sort of early game you need, do need a lot of steel for this but that is a nice way of handling things that is rock solid and you can get a little bit of dirt out of it i haven't actually checked out how you get your food at all what's your food running on one one point nine million calories of meat and half a million calories of barbecue some fried mushrooms okay a lot of fried mushrooms going on and some uh, some frost buns a little bit of leftover bristle berries and omelets very nicely done uh, thanks very much for sending in that map yeah, I'll have uh, another update out tomorrow. I'm going to finish off the, the Let's Play. There's there's pretty much nothing left to do except finish off the uh, the shovels. But uh, I'll cut this out here. I'm going to be stealing some ideas from these people as well. If you have any of your own bases you'd like to send in to me, just uh, the email's in the About section. If you have, even if it's just uh, one nice little build you're happy with, not the whole base, uh, I don't mind, one or the other. I just uh, I enjoy having a look at other people's ideas and how they handle things, though I could not handle that power grid. Dear Lord, that power overlay. That is just... I couldn't handle it. That's too neat. Just too neat for me. <laughs> anyway, I, I hope you've enjoyed this little bit of uh, base loving and uh, good luck.